so many features we will not have detailed discussion about features because whatever the topics we are discussing in java we talk about multi threading we talk about exception handling we talk about garbage collection we talk about oops they are all features of java when you see the features java is simple if you know c++ java is secure robust portable dynamic distributed multi threaded object oriented high performance some features so i am tired of using c and c++ why why you are tired they are platform dependent if a program is written developed by windows developed in windows it must be executed in windows only it will not run in any other operating system then he says that if that is the case use java it is platform independent programming language it is used for developing platform independent application java is simple if you know c++ secured many security features are integrated mainly encryption decryption and it will not affect your system it has got a security manager to check suppose i have got a java program when you start running that program the jvm java runtime environment will check will it affect your hardware device will it your affect any of your system resources if it affect any of the system resources that program will not get executed one reason for security and we are able to send the data in a en encrypted manner only the receiver can decrypt that decrypt that robust robust word meaning is strong robust word meaning is strong so java is a strong language why we say java is a robust language because of two reasons one reason is whatever programs you are developing java is a robust language one reason is in a java program whatever errors are happening in a java program whatever errors are happening all that errors are taken care at compilation level itself i repeat why java is called as robust language java is called as robust language the reason is most of the errors most of the errors are taken care at compilation level so for just imagine all of us are in a team we are all working in a company we are all working in a drega in a, in the software wing we are getting a project when we get the project we start writing the coding when we start the, developing the program we start compiling so many errors are coming so we can rectify the error if we are getting the compilation error we can rectify the error still run the program rectify the error once it gives that code to the production once it is loaded into the client system error should not come that's called as runtime error error should not come in at runtime in the client side so in the case of java most of the errors are taken care at compilation level most of the errors are taken care at compilation level so that's the reason why java is called as robust and another reason why java is called as robust is most of the i mean direct memory manipulation is not given to java direct memory manipulation pointer concepts are taken out in simple words i tell you if i tell in c and c++ we have got pointer concepts we can allocate memory we can deallocate memory but that things address concepts are taken out so that's the reason why java we call it as robust java is portable we can move from different hardware parts because it is architecture neutral dot class file only it is not really dependent on any operating system dynamic distributed multi threaded object oriented all these points we'll discuss later along with oops along with multi threading along with uh, uh, distributed applications that time so c++ how come platform dependent the same diagram what we have seen here this case so you write your c++ program compile it it will create an exe file which is understandable for windows in windows if you compile a program it will create an exe file in linux ubuntu if you write a java c++ program compile it it will create a dot sh file and in mac write the program compile it it will create a dot dmg file that means each operating system has got their own language their own files so this file 
cannot be executed in Ubuntu. This file cannot be executed in Mac, vice versa. .sh file is not understandable for Windows. .sh file is not understandable for Mac. C++ platform dependent. But coming to Java, you write your Java program. Java program is a normal text file saved with the extension of .java. A Java program is a normal text file saved with the extension of .java and is compiled by the Java compiler and is compiled by the Java compiler to create a dot class file and is compiled by the Java compiler to create a dot class file byte code file and every operating system has got their own JVM so there is a JVM for Windows there is a JVM for Ubuntu there is a JVM for Mac so from this we can understand JVM is platform dependent remember listen here please everyone listen here JVM is platform dependent that means there is a JVM for Windows there is a separate JVM for Ubuntu. There is a separate JVM for Mac. Every operating system has got their own JVM. But this dot class file is common for all the JVMs. Dot class file is understandable for the JVM. So this JVM will get that dot class file. It will get converted to Windows understandable form, Ubuntu understandable form, and Mac understandable form. This is the reason how come Java programs are platform independent. I repeat, a Java program is a normal text file. A Java program is a normal text file saved with the extension of .java and is compiled by the Java compiler to create a .class file. A Java program is a normal text file saved with the extension of .java and is compiled by the Java compiler to create a .class file. The .class file contains byte code, a special type of language, understandable, only for the interpreter of Java which is JVM and whichever operating system has got JVM that operating system that JVM will convert that to that operating system understandable form as a result a Java program developed in one operating system will run in any other operating system and this JVM it will not come by default when you install Windows JVM will not come you have to install that then only JVM will come by default, JVM will not come by, de by default. If you install Windows 7 or Ubuntu or if you install Mac, JVM will not come. Java runtime environment will not come. You have to install it separately. That, that, that particular JVM is available for each and every operating system. Mohammed? Mohammed Hamsa. I given your uh, answer to your query. Now, these are the features. Simple. Java is written in C++. If you know C++, then writing Java program is very easy. Writing Java program is very easy. Don't think about that. Java is secured. We've seen that. So tamper-proof Java programs. If the Java program, if you're running that program and if it feels that it will affect your system, it will not be allowed to run that. Secure web applications can be developed using Java. Java is robust. Most of the errors are taken care at compilation level, compilation time itself. Java check, checks the code during the compilation time and runtime also. For example, if a statement is never reached, this error would be thrown during the compilation time. So that's what I told. Why Java is called as a robust language or a strong language? Because most of the errors will be taken care at compilation level itself. Java completely takes care of memory allocation and releasing, which makes the Java program more robust. Direct memory manipulation is not given to the programmer. Portable applications written on one operating system, one hardware of Java can be easily ported to other platform as it is platform independent. Dynamic, distributed, multi-threaded, object-oriented. Multi-threading and all, why I am not giving that importance now? Thread, we need to know about thread. Then only you will understand about multi multi-threading. So this we'll study later along with multi-threading topic we'll study. So just understand these points. That's enough theoretical knowledge. Object, we'll talk about OOPS. Java is object-oriented programming language. Everything is performed using object. So we should know what is object. That we will study along with OOPS concepts. High performance. Bytecode is designed in such a way that execution is very fast, which improves the performance. Not only that, not only that, 
the point which I am talking about, it may not be that easy for you to understand, but just understand there is a term called JIT engine, just in time compiler. Just in time compiler. We use two terms here one is compilation and another is interpretation. Java compiler and Java interpreter. Java compiler and Java interpreter. Then what is the difference between compiler and interpreter? Both are used for trans transferring, I mean conversion. Both are used for converting one type of language to another type, one format to another format. Then what is the difference? So compiler as a whole, it will get converted. Compiler, if you're having a program, Compiler, if you're having a program, so this is what my program, this is another program. We have got some lines of code. So line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, 5, 6, 7, some 7 lines of code. If you do compilation, if you do compilation, this complete code will be converted to some other form that is compilation whereas interpretation line by line it will translate and execute first line it will translate then execute second line translate execute third line translate execute fourth line translate execute line by line whereas compilation as a whole suppose when you are doing the compilation line number three has got some error and line number 5 has got some error. So the compiler will say line number 3 and line number 5 has got some error at the end. Whereas interpreter first line translate execute OK. Second line translate execute OK. Third line translate error. Third line it cannot be translated. So if any error comes in translating any line rest of the things will not be considered at all the rest of the things will not be considered at all the difference main difference between compiler and interpreter compiler as a whole it will get converted interpreter line by line it will get converted so which is faster in execution compilation but in the case of java interpretation is what we are doing so since interpretation if you are doing the performance will not be good line by line it is doing so in order to overcome this, this interpreter has got one more thing called just-in-time compiler. So at that time when we are calling, that time only it will do that conversion, not every time. Whichever the things are required at that time only it will do the processing. Just-in-time compiler. Just-in-time compiler. At that time, whenever a function is called, that time it will execute that. It will not translate before that. So for uh, some another way of implementation is, for example, I've got a function, void fun, a function, which has got 50 lines of code. One simple way to understand this. And I'm calling this function three, four times, fun, fun. Three times I'm calling this. Three times I'm calling. When I call this function three times, the first time we are calling, it will translate this each 50 line and execute. Again, we are calling this, it will translate execute. Again, we are calling that function, again it will translate each line, translate and execute. But if JIT, JIT compiler is used, only one time that conversion is taking place. JVM is interpreter inside that JIT compiler we are using, so it will translate and it will keep that code ready. So only the thing is whenever you are calling, it will get only execute that. Directly it will execute that. So don't think about that now. Just understand Java has got high performance even though it is interpreter. It is integrated with JIT, JIT compiler so that the performance of your Java program is faster. So some of the features of Java language. Some of the features of Java language.